installing the issuing CA. So here we are now on our third and final Windows 2003 server and we can see that this one here we've given the host name of CA issue in the testdomain.com domain. So I'll just cancel that and we'll click on start, control panel, add or remove programs. Now this should start becoming pretty familiar to you now so we'll click on add remove Windows components. Then we'll click on certificate services. Again we see the message, we know what that does so we just click on yes and then we'll click next. Now this time we're going to choose an enterprise subordinate CA. Now it's important to realize that you can actually create an enterprise subordinate CA directly underneath a standalone root CA or underneath a standalone subordinate CA. It doesn't have to be created underneath another enterprise CA and this is exactly what we're doing here. Now the reason of course that we're doing it this way and we've already discussed this is to isolate our root and intermediate CAs from Active Directory and the potential security issues we could face if the domain administrator's account was somehow compromised. Okay so we've selected Enterprise Subordinate CA so we'll click on Next. Now we need to provide a uh, name for our CA which we'll just call CA Issue and we'll click Next. Now we'll just accept the defaults for the database and the database log files locations and we'll click next. Now again we need to request a certificate for this CA by sending one to our parent which is going to be the intermediate CA in this occasion. Now of course we could uh, go uh, directly to our CA on the network because it still is on the network but why not be different this time. Let's just choose the uh, save request to a file and we can choose a location. Now I'll just accept the default and we'll choose next. So we'll just pause this video and we'll return once this is complete. Now like before we'll get another message telling us that it's incomplete because we do need to uh, obtain a certificate so we'll just click OK and we can also see that IIS is not installed on this computer and that uh, web enrollment support won't be available until IIS is installed. That's cool, we'll just click OK again. Alright and we're finished. So I'm just going to close this down and now we'll go back to our uh, intermediate CA and we'll fix the issue we had, the first issue of the pending certificate. So here we are on our intermediate CA, but if we go to pending requests, we don't actually have any pending requests. Now that's because we chose the option of saving it to a file. So what we're going to have to do now is we'll right click on our CA enter, we'll select all tasks, and then we'll select submit a new request. Now what we need to do now is provide the path to the request file that we created on our CA issue. So I'll enter in the path here which you can see goes to CA issue slash C dollars and then of course the name of the request file and we'll select open. Now at this point we will need to refresh our screen and we can see that we do have a request pending. So now we can right click on this, select all tasks and then select issue. Now if we go to our issued certificates we can see that our CA intermediate has actually issued a request for our subordinate CA which is our CA issue which of course was our issuing CA. So now what we need to do is right click again on our certificate and we'll select open and go over again to our details tab and select copy to file which again starts the certificate export wizard. So we'll choose next, we'll choose the PKCS7 and then we'll again include all certificates in the certification path if possible and we'll choose next. Now we need to provide a file name. So we'll enter in a path for the file which we'll call CA issue and we'll choose next and then we'll choose finish and we can see the export was successful so we'll choose OK. So here we are back on our issuing CA we'll click start, administrative tools, certification authority to start the certification authority MMC we'll expand this to make it a little easier to see now again we can see that our issuing CA isn't running so we'll need to install a certificate we just exported from our intermediate CA so we'll right click, select all tasks and then we'll choose to install a CA certificate We'll enter in the path to CA into C dollar CA issue dot P7B where our certificate is stored on our intermediate CA and then we'll select open. Now we can right click, select all tasks and then start the service. Okay so now we're cooking we can see our certificate services is running. So if we right click on our CA issue and select properties on the general tab we can see that our certificate for this issuing CA is the first certificate as indicated by the certificate number of zero. Now if we click on view certificate we can see that it was issued to our issuing CA by our intermediate CA and if we go to the certification path then we can see the hierarchy shows that CA inter is the parent of CA issue and that the root CA is CA root. 
Now that we've actually created a CA hierarchy, probably one of the things that we should do next is look at how to back up and restore our CAs. Now backing up and restoring CA data is absolutely critical because if the CA happens to be corrupted or somehow rendered unusable, then you're going to be no longer able to issue, renew or revoke certificates for the CAs in your domain. Now there's two ways we can issue a backup for our certificate server. The first is to use the inbuilt backup command from the Certification Authority MMC. The second and the recommended option is to use the Windows Backup Utility to back up the key files including the system state as part of your regular backup routine. Now as we have other videos dedicated to the Windows Backup Utility, we'll focus on using this Certification Authority MMC. Now before we start, we'll need to have an empty directory to store our backup files. So we've created a directory called CA Backup ahead of time. Now in the Certification Authority MMC, we'll simply right click on our CA, select All Tasks, and then we'll select Backup CA. Now this will start up the backup wizard, which will also include the private keys, the CA certificates, the configuration information, logs, and so on. So we'll get started and we'll click on Next. Now we need to select the items which we need to back up. We can back up the private key and the CA certificate and we'll check that. We can also back up the certificate database and the database log and we'll also do that as well. Now you'll note here that I cannot perform an incremental backup and that's because we haven't actually done a full backup first. Now once we've completed this first backup then we'll be able to come back in here and issue incremental backups that only back up the entries that have changed since our last full backup. So now we need to provide a path to where we want to store this backup. So we'll just click choose Browse, and we'll go to our CA Backup directory we created earlier, and we'll choose OK, and then we'll choose Next. Now we need to provide a password for security purposes so people cannot take our backup and restore it to their own server. So we'll just enter our password twice and we'll click Next, and then basically we're finished. And then we can see that it's currently backing up our certification authority. Uh, it was pretty quick, so let's just go and take a look at what it's done. So we'll go to our C drive and our CA backup, and we can see a couple of things in here. We have a database directory and the CA issue.p12 file. Now this file here contains our private key. Inside the database folder, we have the database and the database logs. Now however you decide to back up your certificate authority, it's most important that you actually do it. Creating a public key infrastructure is not an easy task, and you will not regret backing it up if you run into trouble. Now with trouble in mind, let's take a look at the process in restoring our CA. Now this wizard is just as easy as the backup. What we'll do is we'll, we'll right click on our certificate authority, we'll choose all tasks, and then we'll choose restore CA. We'll get a message that tells us that the certificate services can't be running while we're doing this, so do we want to stop the certificate services now? So we'll say OK, and we'll get a message saying that the certificate services is stopping. Now this brings us to the restore wizard for the certificate authority. We'll just choose next. Now at this point we can choose whatever it is in reverse that we want to restore. So we'll just say both of them will restore our private key and our certificate and as well as the database and logs. Now we need to browse for the location where we've stored our backup, which of course is here. So we'll choose OK and then we'll choose Next. Now we need to provide the password that we supplied earlier, so we'll simply do that now. And then we'll choose Next and we can see that the restore is going to start when we hit Finish. And we can see the backups have now been copied across. Now we get the option again of starting certificate services up again. Also you'll see here a message that just reminds you that if you do have any incremental backups as well, click no here and then rerun the wizard until all of your incremental backups have been restored as well. And then we can finally come here and click yes. And then the certificate service will be restarted and now our certificate authority has been restored back to full functionality.